So I'm just going to take you through an ideal file structure that you would use for organising GIS data um, on your hard drive, on your laptop, or on an external drive, or on a network drive. Um, and this is just kind of really some of the best practice for organising and managing data. So if we go into the Windows Explorer, and I'm going to show you the, the structure that I've already created. So under the C drive, I've created a folder called GIS. And if we click on that, I have created a series of folders inside there. Uh, the first one is for original data, and this is data that we would download off the internet. Um, and this can be from a variety of different sources. It could be raster data or vector data. And underneath there, there will be a series of subfolders, um, and they will be named um, by the, of the organization that the data has come from. And then within those subfolders, there will be the actual data again in another folder naming the data that, that is there. Um, I created another folder called projects um, and this is really where you would save the projects that you're working on in ArcMap and then I've got another folder here also called working which will be for where we use um, some of the data that we start to manipulate and edit um, when it changes from being original data because it has been manipulated and modified it will be saved in there. So just a quick look under the original data, um, and I know that I'm going to be accessing some data from um, Ordnance Survey, so I've created a folder for them. And also I know I'm going to be downloading some data from Natural England, so I've created a folder for them. And then of course we just keep on adding different organisational folders as we create, or as we download or generate new data. So underneath the Ordnance Survey, again, I've logically divided up into the different kinds of maps I'm going to be getting. So um, obviously a folder for the Ordnance Survey 10K, 25, 50, and also for Master Map as well. So that's where that data will be stored. And again, under Natural England, um, I'm going to at some point be accessing or downloading some data for triple SIs and also some woodland data as well. So um, we'll store it under those particular folder locations. So once we've set up the very basic structure, we've got no data yet, we're going to have to go and download that data from somewhere or from the internet or you're going to be given it. Um, we will actually connect that data using what we call Arc Catalog. So I'm just going to launch Arc Catalog now and I'm going to show you how we connect Arc Catalog to those particular locations on our computer. So when you load Arc Catalog for the first time it has no connections to anywhere. Um, so we need to create a connection at the top here. Um, and we're creating a connection to some folders on our hard drive so logically we would choose to create folder connections. So if we right click on there uh, we can choose connect to folder. And then again we can browse down through our computer to that GIS folder that we created a minute ago. Under my computer and then under the C drive, so there it is GIS. And then we just click OK and there we go. The connection has been made and there we are. Those are the folders that we've already created and if we drill down we can find the subfolders that we created and again we can drill down again and see those. And then if we want to get back, we just click, or we just hit the minus, and again the minus, and that'll take us back to the beginning. So at this point, really, if we want to start manipulating and moving these folders around, we're much better off to do it within the art catalog. So again, we can rename things in here. So again, I can right-click and rename. Um, or I can delete, or I can also copy and paste and move things around as well within the ARC catalog piece of software. So we know that there's been a mistake here um, and I know this actual folder is going to end up containing ancient woodland so I'm just going to quickly modify the name. So I can double click on there um, and then I can just go in and modify that um, and then pre press return and that will then save the changes. So there we go. Um, and there's the ancient woodland layer inside. Again we can rename this to something a bit more meaningful moment it's just with a TQ reference so I'm going to give it a bit of a more useful title 